good and very good Monday morning. My name is Adareva Hillary. It's now for time for politics. We speak about what is happening, the eight stimulus point given by the president on Saturday and what is happening in our houses. We are calling it the house of cards because everyone now is holding their cards close to their chest. You don't know where the vote will fall to or to who uh, they will be favoring. Let's put things into perspective. We'll be uh, looking into this particular economic stimulus points where the president gave, how they will help right now during the COVID-19 and even post-COVID-19. And of course, uh, we will now delve deeper into politics now who is being hosted next if there is and what happens to the other people who is supporting who and what happens keep it away in the morning my name is Dereva hillary i'm speaking to cyrus literature political analyst and health economist beatrice kayo thank you and uh, welcome to the broadcast good morning lady and gentlemen good morning good morning it's 73 days now of washing our hands <sighs> Mm. quarantine uh, or isolation whatever it may be mm. sanitizing mm. Uh, keeping social distance we've missed hugs <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether anyone is like me <laughs> I, I, I miss them I want to begin right from you uh, Beatrice tell me how your past one week has been mm. uh, I think it's I think it's now become normal uh, mm -hmm. because we've gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kenyans, we are known for adaptability. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the real sense, uh, I think we're going from worse. Uh, we are, because the more the cases are increasing, uh, it seems the lockdown, it seems it's not actually even actually working. And mm -hmm. to some, me being a skeptic in a way, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe lockdown was not the way to go in the, in the initial stage because right. uh, it seems it's not... Uh, really uh, assisting in one way or another so I think it's a high time we open up our economy and mm -hmm. we hope that things will go back to normal yeah Cyrus mm -hmm. how has your week been uh, I don't see anything I can complain about but I can say that uh, you know actions speak louder than words to mm -hmm. some extent I was uh, when I was just coming on me I was just thinking loud when, you know when we see how people are relating Mm -hmm. And we talk of uh, the pandemic that is there, the COVID-19, or the coronavirus, as mm -hmm. we may call it. Eh? Mm -hmm. When Tanzania says that, uh, let's, let's just go back to our normal business, do our normal business, do our own things, mm -hmm. let us not have fear. Let us continue. Mm -hmm. You see, it has already accepted to live with the disease. But for us, we, keep, we give uh, measures on how to live, on how to stay. But when we go to the ground, let me tell you the truth. We're totally different. <laughs> Things are different. <laughs> People are just relating normally. Mm -hmm. uh, business is just going on as usual. Mm -hmm. But you see, what we speak is not what we do. But when you go to Tanzania, they are speaking what they are doing. Yeah. They are doing. So we are pretending Kenyans to, are to be taking cautions <laughs> or precautions, mm -hmm. yet we are not. All so right. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is Kenya, and being Kenya is our business. Ah, um, that's a slogan <laughs> for someone I know from somewhere in Moranga. Kenya's our business, and we've been told of uh, dealing with uh, being, uh, if we treat this condition normally, to <laughs> treat as abnormally, and so we're now getting used to... But you know, I keep on asking myself hands. one question. Which is? Who is this person who is sick? <sighs> Unless I visit the hospital. <clears throat> As you will, uh, <laughs> and if you go there, you'll be quarantined. So we'll have a list of you. But I, I think I've I've had someone uh, who told me they were in quarantine, and I was like, okay, so are you okay? And he was like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> but anyway, he was just told. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get to business. On Saturday, the president uh, spoke to the nation, and um, he mentioned a, a number of things, and. Um, what now was a clam of everything is the eight-point stimulus. Uh, there was a project that people have been talking about, uh, Kazim Taani, and we are like uh, the youth again. We remember with the NYS, the project that came, Wakanza Kusema Pesa Kowaze. So many programs have come, others they have been fought politically and they are dead. We no longer hear about them, we don't know what will happen. So there's a project that is coming up. Uh, money has been uh, dispersed and has been allocated, but what will happen? But uh, the first agenda was, or what, or first of all, um, 
element of his uh, eight point was the infrastructure. And uh, just like before we began the broadcast, I was reminding you, Beatrice, uh, last time we talked about food security yeah. and one of the problems that we're having in, in supply or distribution of food is because our roads are not good. Mm -hmm. A farmer will plant, but they will not have uh, this uh, uh, transportation system. Mm -hmm. Now the infrastructure is coming along. Mm -hmm. Roads have been being built over time, mm -hmm. but we still have a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how, how will now this help at this particular time? All right. Uh, infrastructure has always been an uh, issue for a very long time. But at, at this point, uh, it has been uh, a bit, uh, I looked at it critically. Mm -hmm. It seems that we always do patching up of things. So a footbridge breaks down, is destroyed, we patch it. Then another place, there's a section of a road that is destroyed, we patch it. You know, every time we are like, yeah, it's like Kweka Nguo Viraka, mm -hmm. instead of buying a whole new clothes. So we don't sit down and plan and say, uh, where do we really need footbridges? Mm -hmm. Because some of these places that require footbridges have never had footbridges bridges for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It's those shaky ones the communities have created and the ones now the government is thinking okay let's now create some foot bridges. Mm -hmm. But we need serious people sitting down and planning. Mm -hmm. We have the civil engineers on board. We sit down and, and, and strategize and say where do we need roads? Where do we need foot bridges? How do we control the floods? We really, every time there's a flood we will really be patching up bridges and patching up roads every year every year every year. Mm -hmm. So I think there's poor planning uh, on the side of the government there's just poor planning because floods have been here with us before rains have been here with us before mm -hmm. but how comes over time we don't sit down and say this road will always be a flood this is a seasonal river no bridge has ever been uh, created so when now floods arise is when we say now we're in a crisis we're always in a crisis we're always reactionary mm -hmm. i think um, it's still a good thing they are going to do that but it's not a solution it's not a solution it's just like we still have an underlying problem that needs to eventually be solved mm -hmm. but now we are just all the the government is just doing is that reactionary and patching up putting a patch but tomorrow it's gonna bust again mm -hmm. so that's i feel for me from an economist's point of view is a waste of resources over time mm -hmm. because you're always just patching up it's like like going to the doctor and you know you have an, a, a condition but all you do is just patch, but you're not dealing with the root problem mm -hmm. you're not doing, dealing with the root cause so eventually it's going to be very worse and very costly in the long run okay? you see because you're only just patching up here patching up here uh, and then eventually maybe like for example you have uh, dental caries in your mouth so if you don't stop the sweet things what will happen eventually you you lose the whole tooth eventually and it will be more expensive for you replacing it with with with, with a, a cosmetic tooth it's more damn expensive than your original <laughs> tooth so i think that's what the government is, is is trying to do right now and i think it's not the right way to do mm -hmm. i wish they can sit down and do things good and for all mm -hmm. good and for all that footbridge sit down get the experts on board and do the correct thing it will be costly in the beginning but in the long run it's actually a cheaper way out true. yeah now as uh, this uh, idea of infrastructure coming along uh, many people have been or some people have been feeling now it's time now the government is now opening up uh, the cessation and the, the lockdown that has been mentioned now people will be allowed to move but even still the infrastructure especially on roads that we have been crying for do you think the the many organizations that are have are there or the uh, these bodies of uh, dealing with our roads are parallel to the program that could have been done by one do we waste resources on these particular agencies that or the offices that we have that is Ken Hades, Kura and many others. Do you think uh, maybe we need to deal with only one system? Mm, fine. Decentralization of, uh, of work is one of the best thing we can talk about. So I cannot say having Kura, having uh, Kera and having these other things is a bad thing. It's a good idea because we have rural roads, mm -hmm. we have urban roads, we have highways and we have these other roads mm -hmm. so a different sector to hold a different uh, responsibility but if you put if you centralize them then it becomes a problem in uh, one distribution of resources mm -hmm. two in uh, identifying the problem where it is and then you come and solve it but when now you decentralize it it becomes easy you know in the urban in the urban area this road needs to be uh, maintain this road needs to be upgraded this road needs to be done this and this 
in the rural area, this, this is what's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. So uh, decentralization is good. The problem comes to implementation. All right. We have good policies. We have good policy makers. This country has uh, uh, good reports, <laughs> which are always filed <laughs> somewhere, but uh, they never review them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the problem is implementation. The one, the people we trust with implementation now become our enemies. They ensure that we don't get whatever we are supposed to get. Uh, we always give a plus to Kibaki. Why? He implemented whatever he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. One, he talked of free education. He ensured there's free education and ensure there are cl cl classrooms to that. Mm -hmm. Okay? He talked of good roads and ensured the roads are there. He talked of good health. He ensured good health is there for the people. Whereby, uh, when he gave um, Ngilu the Minister of Health, eh, you saw what Charity Ngilu did mm -hmm. to, uh, to the Minister of Health, whereby now everybody could now get these health services. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk of the leadership, uh, let me talk of the current leadership. They have not delivered whatever they say they'll deliver. Mm -hmm. They talked of uh, free laptops to students or pupils in Which schools. was politicized. As much as it was politicized, everything, you see, you see, when you are a politician and you are talking mm -hmm. as a politician, expect politicization of things at the end of the day because mm -hmm. someone else will come and oppose your idea. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you stand and implement what you said you are going to do. Mm -hmm. You don't sit back and look at how people are arguing and talking about you. No. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and do or implement it to the people you, uh, you promise that you are going to, to give them. Because wh whoever are politicizing the issue are your opponents at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And you're the same people in the same table. You sit and do the same things. Now, when we talk of uh, free education, we've had issues with the school fees. We've had issues with the, even the, 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 the infrastructures in schooling. Mm -hmm. They have talked of uh, uh, that uh, every student uh, or every pupil, regardless of the marks you get, will join a secondary school. We've seen a problem where for months are going to school, other people are lacking where to go to school. Why? There are no infrastructures, there are no schools. Okay, so this is a big problem mm -hmm. that a government should sit down and work on. And we cannot say that we don't have policies. We have policies, but priori we, 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 they don't prioritize the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the programs mm -hmm. that they, they have for the people. Sure. So if we have good uh, people who will be there to implement these things, then we are good to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what we lack is we don't have good institutions. As much as you have good institutions, but you don't have good managers in the institutions. The okay? occupants are the problem. Mm -hmm. the are the problem. All right. You are there to serve my interests. So if you don't serve my interests, I'll elbow you out. So these are some of the things that we see. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I can, if we could be saying, I can only elbow you out if you don't ensure that whatever we, uh, we promise these Kenyans or these citizens, that has been fully implemented, I'll elbow you out. Mm. But when I elbow somebody out just because my, uh, my interests interest. are not being catered for, mm -hmm. then we, we are doing a, a bad thing. Then we shall never have development in this country. Mm -hmm. And it is high time for we Kenyans to rise up and realize that uh, this is our country, mm -hmm. and those people we put in leadership are not serving our interests. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we are paying these people a lot of money. Mm. Our taxes. We are taxed, my friend. Mm. Very true. Yeah. And now, uh, <laughs> I want us to move with speed. Mm. Education. Yes. It was another uh, point that uh, the president came up with, yes. Beatrice. Yes. And uh, right now, we do not know the situation, how things will be. Yeah. Just the beginning of the year, we had the 100% transition to high school bringing a problem. Mm. Students don't have anything to go with. as The level of poverty prevented mm. some to report to school. Mm -hmm. We, we saw reports of how uh, students would go to, mm. to schools uh, without anything. Others went with bo boxes, <laughs> other, just a bar of soap. As yeah. in, how now do we move forward? There's money that has been allocated to education. Yes. Exam is coming up. Yes. But now, how now do we ensure, now during uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. and even after uh, post-COVID-19, mm -hmm. our education system mm -hmm. is up and running in a 
in a, in a situation where yeah. everyone will be favored even if it's free education yeah. it will cater for everyone okay uh, actually uh, I'm, I'm i'm a pta member uh, i have a sister in one of the, the national schools and it's true one of the big challenges in most of these uh, institutions is actually infrastructure so you find the government has insisted on 100% transitions uh, in terms of high school, but there are no classrooms, there are no dormitories. People are, students are clamped up in the dining hall. There are no halls, there are no libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at least the government was giving books. Uh, that, that one I saw, there was that government program of uh, giving uh, uh, textbooks for, uh, to, to the students. But the infrastructure is so squeezed because a school that only could host, let's say, 120 students, mm -hmm. now you want the same school to host 450 students. Mm -hmm. That is not possible because the classrooms are still the same, the dining hall is still the same, the entertainment hall is still the same the bus is one you know when you look mm -hmm. at it, it there's a lot of uh, expansion that school needs now the only problem that comes with that is that the same same government instead of providing you, you say a hundred percent transition mm -hmm. But you don't provide the infrastructure to allow that school to go through the 100% transition. And now you're forcing now parents to go to their pockets again mm -hmm. to be able to contribute towards what? Towards the 100% transition. Now, when you think about now about COVID and maybe they put the, the, the policies that have been uh, put in, the measures, mm -hmm. uh, the preventive measures that are going to be put in place. The preventive measures will be maybe 1.5 meter distance per every student, right? That's one way. So even in the sleeping dormitories, they should be 1.5 distance now. <laughs> already there is a crisis in terms of the number of classrooms, the True. number of dormitories. So how will these schools be able to implement 1.5 meter distance? Mm -hmm. Now, they are saying they will introduce e-learning which is good because we all need to digitize. Actually, I, when, you, when you talk about the, 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 the promise of the Uhuru, Uhuru Ruto government mm -hmm. about the laptops, maybe they, they foresaw that in 2020 <laughs> there could be COVID, <laughs> so they were maybe in the spirits uh, thinking, wow mm -hmm. hey, let's put laptops and everything they were in the spirit knowing in the mm -hmm. future, maybe there would be a COVID, COVID. I wish they had implemented it it would have come in very handy and we would be yeah. clapping for this government and say, wow yeah. thank God you saw, uh, you had we were visionary leaders, right? <laughs> Right now, uh, the way it's going to be, uh, one, mm -hmm. how many parents are going to be able to afford uh, a laptop? Right. And then number two, connectivity in the country. Do we have connectivity all over the country? Mm -hmm. Can that child who was called to Alliance High School from Trukana, now they have been told they are going to do e-learning. Okay, the government will give them a laptop, but do they have connectivity? wherever True. they are mm -hmm. now beyond even the, the just the infrastructure and doing the e-learning remember the school in a way kids who are in very poor homes they could be able to access food because they're now in school there's that mm -hmm. mobilization of of, of resources yeah. right mm -hmm. but now when that child and uh, that child is going to do the e-learning in their own homes mm -hmm. you see that's going to be a disparity there are some students who are going to perform better because they have uh, better homes they have better family relations right, right. but if you are if, if you're a child who comes from a poor background, poor family relations, there's always chaos in your home. Or the nomads. Yeah, or they are nomads. You see, that environment is not conducive in itself. Yeah. So I think right now the government should sit down and ask itself, how do we improve this infrastructure? And what do you do? Each school has the number of capacity of students it has. So for it to have a 1.5 meter distance that they are, they, they are requiring, even in classrooms, how do they go about it? Mm -hmm. How do they go about it? Do they increase more classrooms? Do they change the curriculum that they will be teaching 20 students uh, per session? You know, you just have to readjust yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you teach every... They every, every in yeah. shifts. In, they go in shifts. Yeah, they go in shifts. Is it every 20 students per lesson? Then the teachers, how will they even compensate the chair? Because now more work for the teachers. Because where you are, you are teaching only one lesson, 40 students. Now you have to be doing twice the lessons for, so that you have the shifts. Okay, so sometimes the lessons will spread even in the evening, right? And the time management also is a question. It's another question, yeah. exactly. So when you think about it, it this is not a rash uh, idea. It, it should not be a rash decision. You don't just sit and declare and give draconian rules out of the blues and say by tomorrow all parents to have laptops. 
Hey, okay, I may have a laptop, but I have a caraboy in my home. That's what I usually use. Electricity connectivity. So it, it, it may not add up in the long run when they, they, when they say e-learning is good. Digitalization is very good. I love technology. I don't disagree. But then we have to look at our environment and our context. Right. So we tailor make everything to our context, right? Okay. So if we don't tailor make things to our context and we want us to ape the Western way, we just want to ape all the Americans are doing this, Chinas are, Chinese are doing this, Oh, they're doing this. Let's tell him. And that's why I like someone like uh, Dr. Makufuli because him is still making based on his country. He's looking at his environment. Mm -hmm. This is what is happening in my environment. These are how my people are. And this is what we can do. And you look at him, the return to school formula. He said, let's first the candidates go mm -hmm. back to school mm -hmm. and higher institutions. Why? Because higher institutions, you can easily do e-learning comfortably. Mm -hmm. And it's not a mandatory that you're going to do an end of year exam. So he said, okay, let's begin with the candidates those are the most crucial ones these ones we can space them out in the school and curriculum can mm -hmm. continue going mm -hmm. as we sit down and figure out what are we going to do with the others who are not even candidates mm -hmm. you see that's already a step forward because you you can't build school overnight you can't build structures overnight that will call on for a budget eh, all over the country sure. so i think a proper planning prioritizing the correct thing mm -hmm. and don't just give draconian rules no okay study your people and study your environment and then <coughs> implement mm. yes. now Cyrus, maybe uh these people had you last a week when you spoke mm. of the uh the labor the number of teachers now they'll yes. be hiring ten thousand yes. teachers yes. Mm. Uh, to come in and uh, help in the situation mm. do you feel your question your question or your worry has been responded to i, I was happy uh to feel that uh, my 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 idea was adapted mm -hmm. okay and uh, it's one of the things that uh, I've been yearning for for a very long time. And what I want to say is this, eh? you know, uh, when you talked of the stimulus uh, thing that uh, Uru was parading, <laughs> let me say parading <laughs> on Saturday. True, he was parading because uh, one I've always said, and I'll never uh, retract this, eh? uh, Uru is a good PR guy. He knows how to speak, he knows how to present, give him any paper document. Uh -huh. He will present it in the best uh -huh. way possible. When it comes to implementation, mm -hmm. a big problem. And uh, you see, when you see people gathering together, they are gathering together not to serve the interests of the people, but mm -hmm. they are gathering together to, 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 to make their pockets full. Mm -hmm. They are gathering together to eat. They are gathering together to steal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these programs have been made, yes. Mm -hmm. The money has been set aside, yes. But the committees that are going to be put in place... Mm -hmm. will 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 get bigger budget than the program that's supposed to be implemented mm. person will be hired just to be a committee member who will be earning 100,000 per day as a sitting allowance okay so this money all this money that has been allocated will go to individuals just sitting in a committee taking tea somewhere okay mm -hmm. and not to implement the project I'm not telling the truth. And that's the problem that we have in this country. Budget is set aside for this and this and this. When that budget is set aside for an identified item, a committee is placed. Okay? Mm -hmm. This committee has been selected. The committee will take three quarters, okay, of the monies in to, their pockets. To plan. But for the implementation, it is only a quarter. So when will we finish whatever we come up with, the ideas we come up with, mm -hmm. we'll never finish these ideas. So one, we need to prioritize the, uh, uh, the, 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 the projects than the people who seek to come up with the ideas, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk of uh, uh, the infrastructure and the schooling, okay? I like what my sister has brought forward. It's the same things that we are discussing here on Monday. Let us have good plan, okay? Let us not just rush. Mm -hmm. Our, our pupils, our students, and our, our brothers to school. Because if this disease is there, they speak, it is there. Fine, it is there. <laughs> then we are, going, are we, are, we, are going, we are going to have a lot of problems, mm -hmm. and we are going to have a lot of infections yeah. in our society. Believe mm -hmm. me or not. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We are going to have more deaths than we see today. Mm -hmm. We are going to be the Spain of today. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, these are some of the things that we need to put in place. If the government wants to return the school eh, or open the schools, 
let them start with these uh, candidates, okay? <laughs> then let enough teachers be in place. Then let them also look at what else can we do. Are we going to de detailize education? <laughs> whereby we ensure that each and every... And this is the time the government should be doing this, working together with the local administration, okay? Mm -hmm. Ensuring that there is electricity in the school, okay? Mm -hmm. There is enough infrastructure in the school, right? the desks, the whatever, the, and then there is enough food in the school, okay? That will be able to cater for all these people. All right. Then we should also have digital centers, okay? Like we can say in counties, let us have digital centers whereby uh, if a school cannot hold a certain number of students, let these students or pupils gather somewhere for that digital learning lessons, okay? Then this way, everybody is accessing education no matter what. If we can have uh, digital centers in each and every county, like even seven or five or whatever, but then also... Uh, go hand in hand with the situation that we are facing right now, okay? Mm, okay. And like just talking and we are not doing anything on the ground. <laughs> yes, he has said the money has been set aside to hire teachers. How many times have we had this? And he's hiring ICT, okay? yeah? Mm -hmm. how, many teachers, uh, how many people have we, have, we, have we seen who have been hired? The, the TAC has always had problems. Socioni has always talked about all these things, okay? And then they, are, they, they, they took Socioni to be an enemy mm -hmm. of the government. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that have been raised so many times, but no one has even had interest on them. When you go and talk to a teacher, mm -hmm. he'll tell you a very different story, okay? Because some of us have teachers. We have brothers, we have friends who are teachers. So when we sit down to discuss such, a, such a things, mm -hmm. now they tell you the real problem that is there that the government is not addressing. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that we need. To the, 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 question, the question would be who is involved in decision making. Last time you were here, you, you talked about uh, health mm. and you mentioned about fruits. And now I can see uh. fruit vendors and mm. uh, small medium entrepreneurs, they yeah. have now something, 10 billion for them and... Uh, um, Around uh, 30 for the deaths and something. <laughs> it has been 30 million. The question is, will, will, will this money get to this person? Yes. That's the question. Uh, uh, Fine, uh, the actually, we there. should be asking how, how is the distribution of this money? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we registered? This small scale uh, entrepreneurs, are they... Are they registered? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fruit vendors we see on the streets, are they registered? Mm -hmm. Because this is one year of knowing mm -hmm. we have this d database of mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. this kind of people. They need money. How will be the... Uh, how will the money be distributed? They will go to ask for loans and then the registration. How do you feel about this actually? Interestingly, uh, I think we Kenyans are our own enemies. Very for true. example, how many people have registered their businesses? We fear tax. We fear tax. We don't be known by the government what we are doing so that we can eat everything. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's a bad culture. It's a, it's a, we have a very terrible culture. Mm -hmm. So even now when the government has said it's going to release, let's say, 10 billion shillings to go to small scale farm, uh, small entrepreneurs and CMEs, mm -hmm. how many CMEs have illegally registered? Mm -hmm. You see, so people will actually be dying silently because one, they're already on the wrong of, side of the government. <laughs> they have never registered, they've never done tax returns mm -hmm. because they've been robbing the government one way or another. You know, sometimes we Kenyans, we go uh, shouting, uh, the government is bad, or oh, building infrastructure, but also you, you're also robbing mm -hmm. uh, the same government that you want it to, <laughs> to help you out, right? Because, <laughs> wait, 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 I finish. Because uh, me being a Christian, you know, Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Yeah, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Uh, At least you'll come and question the government. I pay my taxes. Right. There are people who come and claim I pay my taxes, but then you ask them, but at the end of the day, do you do your tax returns? Fine. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you mm, give the government what, 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 what it requires? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so now when they say they are going to release the 10 billion mm -hmm. shillings to, to, uh, to uplift the SMEs and, and, and small scale mm -hmm. businesses, most likely the people who are going to benefit from it are those with registered businesses. Mm -hmm. So you with Duakali, you've never registered your business. I can guarantee you most likely it will not reach you because there's no even database know. yeah we don't even know you <laughs> are you getting so i think this is the high time i think also to encourage kenyans don't always uh, think negative about your government all the time you know if, it's like you getting married to a man and every time you're just talking ill of that man then you're asking yourself when will he ever even become better you're not even giving him an opportunity to actually even become better right, right. so if the government has given you rules register your business say what you are doing uh if you've made your profits give 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 your tax at least you have the audacity to stand and 
and say, mm -hmm. I pay my taxes. I actually am a hard-working Kenyan and I give you my taxes for my business. Mm -hmm. But how comes this road to transport my food stuff is not actually being made, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you you don't vote today and then tomorrow you're shouting, this government is bad. I tell such people, shut up. You mm -hmm. never even went to vote. <laughs> just keep quiet. You didn't vote. Just shut up. Stay away for five years. No, it's true because mm -hmm. you did not participate. So Kenyans, we should move away from that mo motion of uh, notion of being observant and criticizing every time we're just criticizing and you're not doing something about it mm -hmm. so i'm sorry to say if the, the government has declared it's going to support small business uh, small businesses the unfortunate thing is that if you are that small business and you legitimately registered mm -hmm. and you even if you don't make any problem you, you you zero in your tax most likely those are the ones who are going to benefit mm -hmm. but if you never registered your cashier me trust you me <laughs> you, you may never. not even see. it's like the, it's like the money they say that they're going the, to give to cushion, to cushion to cushion families for example right. i even asked somebody who are these families that actually getting this it's the same, the, the same amount of money you can yes. so what you, I, I i asked myself is that who assessed the very needy mm. in the society. Mm. The chiefs. The sh chiefs, right? <laughs> Was there a database? No, they just say this home. Because even people discover so I so could be very needy. I don't have hunger in my in my house, and I may be really <laughs> benefit from <laughs> the two thousand. No, no, no. Look at Beatrice, it because I, I had yeah. I had during the 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 census yes the people who responded to questions that uh, i have i'm um, self-sufficient yes. you know i have everything yes when now this time comes uh, who, who is vulnerable yes. you're not in the list because you lied yeah uh, I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to say something yeah i i cannot blame kenyans mm -hmm. on uh, registering businesses or doing this and this oh. i can tell you one thing mm -hmm. kenyans are aggressive people Kenyans True. are paying taxes. What? Let me let, let, let no. On I, VAT. I, 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 I do. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I do accounting. Mm -hmm. I, I do auditing. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is what I do. Yeah. But okay? you can only now, pay tax if you have registered let, let, your let business, me tell you right? One thing. Let me tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are paying taxes, no matter what. When you talk of registering businesses, do you know how many businesses out here are registered? Uh -huh. Do you know how many youths? Register their businesses in the name of getting the 30% uh -huh. from the government yes. procurement. Yes. Do you know how many uh, dis disabled people registered businesses to get the 30%? How many women registered? So many. But the, the government, they, they say a government that gives you everything is a government that takes from you that everything. But okay? if they register, Another are they thing is, eh, they are, one, what happens is when the government has set a plan, like we are going, we, we have this money for this or we have this money budgeted for this mm. the same same government is, the, is going to eat that money how many officials from the government have registered uh, smes that are going to, to benefit from these monies i'm telling the truth mm -hmm. and how many youths or how many smes outside there mm -hmm. have registered businesses but they're not going to benefit from this so this money is still going back to the government the same same people mm -hmm. in who are working in those offices mm -hmm. they are going to register this to small small businesses or they have them so they are going to get it or they'll work in cohort okay they tell someone come i get uh, you get 30 percent i get 20 percent so the government is losing okay when this 70 percent has gone okay the one who has gotten 30 percent is the one who's going to pay now the taxes from 70 percent mm -hmm. are not going to be to be seen so there, there, there's a cohort there's a cartel already existing to get all these monies and so that's should, that's should we have the distribution of the have. money based on the time you registered your company mm -hmm. yes. that that is one thing then the, the based also on how long have you managed your business on your own how long have you run that kiosk mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. How many people, you see how when the bank wants to give you a loan yes. financing uh -huh. a business, mm -hmm. they come on the ground, they check, yes, there's this shop, you are the owner, okay? They do what we call visibility study, okay? They, there's what we call KYC, know mm -hmm. your customer. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the bank does. It cannot just give you money mm -hmm. without having done their own 
uh, uh, research. Mm -hmm. So they come on the ground, they do, they confirm that business belongs to you, mm -hmm. you run that business day in, day out. Before they give you money, they have already done their case study, they have already done their research, they have all the facts to give you that money. Yes. So this is some of the things the government should do also. Because these money, yes, it is there to help these people. Yeah, but right. because it is not go get going to get to that person because uh -huh. there's somebody seated in this office yes. mm -hmm. who has already created a cartel. So this all, all this money yeah. will go back to this person. Okay. And this money won't be taxed. Then when you talk of taxation, Kenyans pay tax. Yeah. What Kenyans fail to do mm -hmm. is accountability. Okay? Calling the government or calling the taxman to accountability. Why am I saying so? How many, how many billions has KLA lost through corruption? Go sit down and look at the billions KLA has lost through corruption. Okay? Then, another question you should also ask yourself. But, but, but interjection. Uh -huh. uh, just an interjection. Uh -huh. I think the, the gap that is there about the small business, uh, the small businesses, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have enough data. Because I'm looking at that kiosk in the rural area that just sells Kiberiti, mm -hmm. um, Kate, Blue Band, and whatever. Nascaria Kupima. Nascaria Kupima. Because those, those are the real Kenyans we're talking about. Yes. I'm not talking about the real Kenyans with, with office. Those are the, the real small business people. Mm -hmm. And the Mamamboga who is in Hakiba are you sure that Mama Mboga no. wait 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 uh -huh. are you sure that Mama Mboga has uh -huh. actually registered no think about it mm -hmm. but anyway if we go with the basis that that kiosk most likely has a kanjo license yeah that mm -hmm. kanjo license yes. that is that, that is issued issued mm -hmm. we ask ourselves does the government have a database well, well, wait uh, okay. does the uh, government those. have a database mm -hmm. of these individuals who have these SMEs right. they can actually say uh between Cairo kiosk and you know kerosene and tumafta kid to Akupima in an actual day earns 3,000 shillings from this kiosk. Do we have such data? Mm -hmm. okay. Because that is where that, that is where the gap is. And that when I was saying that as much as, for example, we are saying, yes, the government is on the wrong, the mm -hmm. government has issues, true, but we really need to clean up our databases. That's number one. Because right now, you can't start saying, uh, right now we're in a crisis of COVID, mm -hmm. send researchers to go find out let, which let, business, let, let, which, which, which business, which let, business is supposed to... Unfortunately, yeah. we're we running yeah. out let of let time. One before we go to number two, okay? Yeah. Now, there's what we call, uh, uh, the, this institution called Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Yes. They always uh, issue what we call economic survey reports. Yes. Yearly. Yes. When you sit down and look into that book, mm -hmm. it gives you all the data, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I always, I, I have all those books from... 2009 mm. to date. So, so, when you, uh, so, so you, when you sit down uh. eh, and look into, they tell you these are the lawyers we have, these are the women lawyers, these are the female lawyers. They, every, even to the Mamamboga down there, the registered they, ones. They, they give you all the, no, they give you all the information. These are the number of students we have in this university. This, uh, they give you all the information from the Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics. So after the information? So uh -huh. this information is always complete. Pra, co compiled uh -huh. eh, so that it can help in budgeting. So the government does not come up with the budget or the monies without the statistics. Mm -hmm. So it get the statistics from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. So how does it distribute the funds? Now, how did it, the way I've told you, the government distributes the funds to the cartels. The government <laughs> gives the money, yes. It issues the money, yes. But it does not teach that, the, that common man. That's a it, strong it allegation. <laughs> With the, in the cartels in the ministries, uh -huh. it ends up with, with the cartels in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in whatever section it is the government has issued the money for. Then another thing is uh, when we talk of uh, taxation, where is also uh, the government, has, when, when does the KRA tell us to file returns? Mm -hmm. That's another question you should ask yourself. Mm -hmm. This June is when the KRA will now come out, sing good songs, <laughs> telling you how to file your returns, <laughs> telling you how you should, should lipa ushuru as yes. a Kenyan. Yes. But it does not do that daily. If it does that daily, yeah. every person okay. will be accountable to pay the, the taxes. How many, how many people have pins and they don't know that if I have a pin and I don't have an income, I should file my return? So many of them have a pin, but they don't know that. So they have a debt which they have to pay out of not, know, not knowing. But when KRA will go out and tell these people, mm -hmm. educating them day in, day out, when they go to schools and educate these people, when you have a pin, mm -hmm. because people t mm -hmm. acquire a pin mm -hmm. for one, getting help, help, help loans when they are doing universities mm. or a bank job. loan. Or, but they are not told mm. when you don't have an income, you can file a new return. Yes. They are not told that. So, so when such things are told, the common manage, 
every Kenyan will not okay are they adept. So right now most adjust. of the Kenyans okay are they because, because of lack of knowledge. Of lack of knowledge. <laughs> so, so what we can say is a lot of civic education. It's I wish the government carried out. I wish the government would prioritize in terms of its funding. And that's what I was telling somebody last time. Even this whole COVID issue. Mm -hmm. Education was the number one area they would have Very focused true. on. Public health education. Before you even train the doctor to go treat somebody about COVID. The number one person who should have been on the ground was a community health worker mm -hmm. on the ground Very and true. a public health officer mm -hmm. to teach the community. Maybe even the cases will not, even you may not have needed a, a lockdown. Very true. But now what we have this misconception, people in the high areas is where we should start. No, mm -hmm. the best is usually, uh, actually in terms of a pandemic, is the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Start with the community person on the ground. That is a person who is with that mamamboga, with that chief with that kule chini kijijini mm -hmm. they would have told them in the prevention measures are this wash your hands like this wear a mask like this do one two three four if you even you start parading doctors to sit and panel and mm -hmm. whatever whatever mm -hmm. and you give CG allowances to these people mm -hmm. those who are the first people mm -hmm. who should have actually be in, in, in been utilized on the ground and mm -hmm. most likely by the time you get that covid case it's maybe that very rare cases because uku chini chief Community health officer, public health officer has already mitigated. So the way he's saying, even the civic education, it's the same thing. True. Employ these uh, legal officers or legal clerks or these paralegal th people. Mm -hmm. Go to the community. Just the way people hire the community health doctors, they're not necessarily doctors, mm -hmm. but they are trained to actually teach people in health information. So teach the same things to these in, in, individuals so that they are, they're able mm -hmm. to organize, the, uh, organize themselves and able to learn about whatever the government actually wants. Mm -hmm. People are able to public participation. Is actually really encourage even in the constitution allow right. the public to participate so that there is also no resentment you okay. know maybe we are resenting a government that is not even collecting anything because <laughs> people are hiding that uh, you know it's true it because, yeah. because people are not filing any Very true. Mm -hmm. then you are here castigating guru and in real sense he's looking at the bank account they're empty i'm not uh, i'm not saying uh, actually has been saying hakuna <laughs> pesa <laughs> we, we we have less than uh, 10 minutes yeah. and we have to mention this one thing that has been happening in the upper houses yes. We yes. saw uh, yes. the other week um, majority speaker yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kip Chumba Murkam and being hosted and then uh, later when followed by uh, Professor Kim yeah. Biki. Mm -hmm. And the question many are asking, mm -hmm. what did they do? Is it constitution to be hosted? <laughs> is it because of the party? Is it because of the loyalty? Is it punishment? What is really happening in these houses, mm -hmm. Cyrus? Uh -huh. What is happening in the houses is uh, the expected <laughs> thing to happen. <laughs> No, it is true. <laughs> One, uh -huh. why am I saying the expected thing to happen? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't expect, we've, okay, no, not, not expect. Yeah. Our political parties, mm -hmm. our political parties are created for convenience sake. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying so? We only have political parties that will lead us to get to something, mm -hmm. period. And political parties are an individual. <laughs> Once the individual gets out of a political party, that is the end of that political party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we establish a political parties act, mm -hmm. an institution that is supposed to manage independently the political parties. Mm -hmm. But the, pol the, 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 the organ or the institution is not independent. It is managed by the whatever. <laughs> now, what <laughs> I can say, the, the political system in this country mm -hmm. is a very funny political system. Yeah. Uh, in East Africa, <laughs> compared to Tanzania, mm -hmm. CCM has been there since time memorial. Mangufuli leaves, CCM will be there. Somebody else comes, CCM will be there. Mm -hmm. Chadema the same. FBC of Uganda the same. If BCJ leaves, BCJ is, just, oh, is only, always a flag bearer of, uh, of, of the, the party. Of the party. Mm -hmm. he, has, he doesn't have any other things attached to, to, mm -hmm. to the party. He's only the flag bearer. Mm -hmm. So with or without BCJ, FDC will remain there. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you today. With or without, uh, without Odinga, <laughs> ODM is dead. Mm -hmm. That is one thing you are, you are, you are sure of. Because well, he attached to the because person. Because he, 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 we are attached to the person. Mm. ANC of uh, South, Africa. South Africa, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With or without Cyril Ramaphosa, with or without Zuma, mm. it is it's there. With or without Mandela, ANC is still there. So why can't we, and that's why the, pol the Political Parties Act was brought, okay? Mm -hmm. To bring yeah. sanity in political parties, 
to kill these breakfast parties. We still have the breakfast parties in this country. <laughs> yes. They are still there. They are still existing. Okay, they are still existing. Mm -hmm. okay? We have a scenario of Ford Kenya was there, attached to Jeramoki Oginga Odinga. Yes. When he died, he went to the party. Okay, now it's a, it's a, it's a breakfast party. Yeah. That's not a party. That's a, a, a political is a, 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 a Providing breakfast party support to major that, that parties. comes <laughs> from a village <laughs> in, in Bungoma. Let, let when, when you talk of eggs the same way, when mm -hmm. you talk of Odi the same way, so when you talk of Jubilee the same way. So these things are there, they are happening, and whatever is happening today was expected. All right, let and me hear from tell you the truth now. Is, eh, <laughs> before, you come, before she comes in, eh, I can tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Jubilee, and I say this thing in another media station, Jubilee is, I compared it to the Babylonian town. <laughs> <laughs> when, they, when they came together to speak the same language, yes. they were it, 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 it crumbled. Uh, and uh, there's another the, story. The, the, the handshake crumbled. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the, uh, the other thing I want to relate to. Tom and Jerry are good friends. But? But, <laughs> <laughs> now, Tom wants to pretend Jerry is an enemy, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when, when he presents Jerry is an enemy, mm -hmm. the owner of, of, of Tom mm. won't change Tom, so that, won't t change Tom to another person, won't bring in another person, but will maintain Tom, so that Jerry does not, is not harmed. All Jerry right. remains. All right. So, in this scenario, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say who is Jerry and who is Tom. Mm -hmm. So that the scenario of politics tell. in this country. Is, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a merging up of uh, a Wiper and Jubilee. <laughs> we had the other day, we have we had Kanu and uh, we of course we have the uh, the hosting of these people. We don't know who is next mm -hmm. in the acts. I don't know to whom it will <laughs> fall. <laughs> <People dwell>. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens next uh, in the next very few minutes? What's your take? My take is that uh, I think we need to have political parties that have ideologies that people stand with. Mm -hmm. Because what we saw in the ousting of Kindiki and Murkomen and, and whatever, it, it was not in the interest of the country mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Because if you, are, if you are a political party with ideologies, mm -hmm. because when you look at the Western governments and, and, and even the Western culture, each party you stand with, it Don't has... Even the Western, even in Tanzania. Even, yeah, they have South parties that yeah. have ideologies mm -hmm. that they stand for. Mm -hmm. So if, you are, if, if your ideology is uh, labor rights, uh, every worker <laughs> should be well presented yes. that is what you stand for yeah. when you go to parliament anybody who comes mm -hmm. under the umbrella of your party mm -hmm. that is what they are fighting for if on your end is, is fighting for land rights and land well, that's what your uh, political party is all about is fighting for mm -hmm. lands mm -hmm. then whoever you vote in into that parliament from the one to the end yes. they are trying to ensure land rights in this Kenya in, in they're actually being implemented Very but true. now what we have is people tailor making parties to suit themselves have a have a bus it reaches you to your destination then you dump it's like a narcissistic kind of an affair I, I use you for energy and supply <laughs> once I've used you and I am satisfied to the supply I need I dump you because I no longer need I've used you dump you you know mm -hmm. that is the culture with this political party and you'll find you'll find some people political mm -hmm. careers can actually die with those political parties mm -hmm. never to be had again <laughs> it's so narcissistic <laughs> trust you me very narcissistic so we need Moving on forward, I hope we raise a generation, a new generation, mm -hmm. that will come up with political parties that have ideologies, right. that have rules, that have what they stand for. They can fight for what they stand for, and they can die for what they are standing for. So if you're saying we are going to, our party is going to fight land grabbing mm -hmm. from 1960 to whatever, we'll stand with that party. Everybody is coming on board in that way. Our number one goal is fighting land grabbing, right? right? Yeah, and, and, and that, that is my parting shot. But I wish we change our, 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 our political system in a way whereby whoever will come up with a political party or will come up with a movement or whatever tailor making this time mm -hmm. around will make a tailor making, let's now forge forward. We'll rather have two political parties in this country, mm -hmm. for and against, just like they in America, Republican <laughs> or Democrat, for and against. Mm -hmm. but each party has its own ideologies that can run through generations so that we keep on not stop wasting time today you are watermelon today you are <laughs> yeah, today you are in today you are out today we love you today we hate you. it's very narcissistic it's it's gaslighting every time yeah mm. you, we, i use you dump you use you dump you we recycle the same leaders you know well, i think it's, it's it's high time we we we, we, uh, we, we my, moved away from to well, my conclusion, that, that, that that's yes very fast very yes, fast yes. to my conclusion i can say the political parties are Act is an institution. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let it let it step up and play its role the way it's supposed to play. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And let political parties be institutions, not individuals. All right. Because uh, when they're institutions, yeah. mm. they also employ the youths. 
Okay. Let us not just use the youths when we want them, <laughs> and then we have things. them after that. All right, my, my, my director is on me here. We are out of time. And I thank you so much for coming and sharing your opinion and your ideas in regards to what has been happening. Actually, the the eight uh, stimulus point is just the big four agenda spread. spread. If you notice, yeah. the stimulus yeah. has been uh, spread. And we are yeah. hoping the, the youth will be... Uh, Engaged more into these the big and, uh, is a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> they will not be throwing stones <laughs> back home. Thank you so much for keeping us company. They have been my guest, Beatrice Cairo, health economist and political analyst. Um, Cyrus Elito, so. thank you so much. My name is Dereva Hilary. I'll be seeing you again on Monday next week. Until then, have yourself a very good, blessed week and uh, stay home. Come out here if it's important. Wash your hands, remember, sanitize. Observe uh, social distancing and remember to love yourself and the people around you. Goodbye.